my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about PSG and their tactics, their set of instructions that you'll be needing to recreate and replicate a realistic PSG approach under Luis Enrique, of course, the new head coach of, well, uh, PSG. So, of course, just looking at the team, there are some players, namely Mbappe, who are probably going to be leaving, but we, we don't know for sure. But there are some, some players that, you know, they've brought in. So we will be going over it, um, talking about it, trying to show you how to replicate it and if you enjoy this video please smash that like button of course it always helps me and subscribe if you are new to the channel of course the more the merrier so just looking at the team we've got Neymar on the left hand side who also might be leaving so i don't know this this team is in a transition period which is somewhat exciting to see but they, they've also got Mbappe down the middle Dembele on the right hand side who might not come i'm not sure of course as i'm recording this it is the 31st and the the with the release clause it does expire tonight the 50 million release clause of course so it might happen it might not happen i think it's going to happen which is why i've gone ahead and put him in the team um he's more or less the reason why i'm doing these tactics because i've been inspired to to do these tactics because of um dembele but anyway we've got Vitinha, we've got ugarte we've got ruiz in the midfield um hernandez another new player of course um Skriniar, don't forget ugarte is also new um Marquinhos, Hakimi, and of course Donnarumma, who, yeah, there we go. We've got Eketika on the bench, Asensio, Soler, fantastic player. Pereira, who is a centre-back, but you can change it back to a CDM, because I think under um, Luis Enrique, he is going to more or less be the, the midfield dog that comes on to potentially replace another midfield dog in Ugarte. And to be honest, I've always liked him more as a DM. I don't know why he was really that third centre-back, you know, I don't know. Anyway, point being... Um, Navas on the bench, Kempembe and Mendes, and then in the reserves, another new player, Lee Kang In. I don't know too much about him. Um, I think they signed him from what Valencia or something. I don't know. Um, then we've got Mukiel, who is a fantastic right back slash centre back, fantastic. Um, Diallo, of course, Zahir Emery, of course, another young talent that could potentially blow up for France. I mean, how many young talents do they need? Um, they've got Tenas, who they recently just signed. Rico, who is kind of involved in an accident i don't know too much about it but you know hopefully he makes it hopefully he pulls through um they've got bennett and then they've got sanchez who might be leaving and going to roma and then they've got a few other players that i i don't care about um yet i mean who knows in three or four years they might be superstars and then i'll care um as for the formation though i've gone with just a basic 4-3-3 holding but what i've done is because we're going to be implementing a tiki tucker esque style of football I've brought some players close to each other. So in terms of the wingers, I've like slightly narrowed them slightly and brought them in a bit. And then as for the midfielders, I've made them slightly wider. So that therefore they're closer to the wingers and the wingers are closer to the striker. And it just implements this nice way of getting these little triangles going in the midfield for you to maintain possession. And then speaking of triangles and possession and everything, we have got the tactics. Um, so basically defensive style is set to press after loss of possession. Of course, Luis Enrique likes to play a possession-based brand of football and he will have the ball or his team will have the ball more times than not. So if you're going to use this team and this set of tactics, you need to have a possession-based style in mind and you, you can't be springing counter-attacks all the time and just making sure Mbappe and Dembele are just sprinting ahead. That's not how these set of tactics work. You're going to want to create triangles, create passing play, pass and move all the time and that's how you're going, going to get the best out of these tactics and of course these players. So as for the, the defensive style, like I said, it's going to be a press off the loss of possession, um, which is quite nice because you have the likes of a Dembele, the likes of an Mbappe who are very fast, physical, and can close down passing lanes, and therefore you'll be able to more times than not win the ball back very quickly, which is quite nice. As for the width, we have it set to 25. In a Tiki Taka S style of football, you want your players to be nice and narrow, and that means defensively as well, because if you win the ball back, you can fire off five or six quick passes, get the opposition stumbled and fumbled and then you can look to move the ball higher up the field um, as fast as possible but also with a nice calming reality check about it um, so that is set to 25 and then as for the depth it is set to 70 so it's quite a high line you have a, a decent paced set, uh, set of defenders in Hakimi and Hernandez great fast paced fullbacks but then I think in terms of Skriniar and Marquinhos I don't think they're the fastest players um, known to mankind, but of course you do have Agate who's going to be in and around there shielding that back line making sure that nothing you know weird happens but it is going to be a nice high line and it does help you maintain possession because 
if the opposition tend to just blow balls and sweep balls high up the field, and that, that means that Skriniar and Marquinhos can help win them back airily and win you back possession quite nice and, and easily, of course. Um, as for the offensive play, um, we have it set to slow build up and chance creation is set to possession. Like I said, Luis Enrique, he likes playing a possession-based brand of football. We've seen it with Spain. We've seen it with the Barcelona teams in the past. Um, yes, and of course, he has played with a false nine. So keep that in mind when we talk about the instructions, of course. Um, but he does like to, you know, progress the ball nicely, slowly, calmly through the final thirds of the, of the, the field, of course, looking for spaces to operate and making sure that Certain players function better in certain areas, um, and you do that by a slow approach to, to your offense, making sure you're clinical with your passing, opposed to just hoofing balls up and having a Dembele and a Mbappe run onto them. Of course, you are capable of doing that, because you do have those players, but where is the beauty of the game if you're not going to use the correct instructions, you know? This is not FIFA Online where you're just trying to score as many goals as possible. Um, we're talking about career modes, like, you know, tactics here where you can try and make it a bit more enjoyable that's mainly why i make these videos to try and make it more enjoyable for myself and hopefully for you guys who watch this um as for the width we have a city 30 like i said tiki tucker play you need your players nice and narrow that therefore they can interchange passes pass and move consistently and effectively and you do that by being quite narrow to each other um because like if you're spraying 40 yard passes it's not very effective all the time and it's not fast paced is it so you, you want to be interchanging passes. You want to be out passing your opposition more times than not. Be getting, what I target is, I normally target around 100 to 120 passes per game. And I play on four, uh, in four minute halves. So you want to be like making sure that you try and, and get as many passes in as possible. Of course, it's not the main aim. The main aim is to score as many goals as possible. But like I always do try and just have that little goal in the back of my head. As for players in the box, we have a set to eight. Now, I've noticed with PSG, I'm pretty sure Mbappe is the only player in that front line, and you could even include the midfield, who is over six feet tall. <laughs> that's that's quite a not a tall team at all. But what you can do is because it's so fast paced, you can fire balls and across the face of goal, low hard crosses for the likes of an Mbappe, Dembele, uh, Neymar, of course. Um, and then of course you do have that extra man. It could be a Soler, it could be a Vatina, it could be even a Lucas Hernandez that make that extra run as well into the box. But essentially, you want more players in the box to be able to score more goals. As for corners and free kicks, it is set to four each. Standard procedures, I don't need to explain. Okay, starting off with the goalkeeper. He is set to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper. Of course, Donnarumma is fantastic. He's physically huge. Um, and he's always going to be a, a perfect player to command his box. Command balls, grab them out of the air. Make sure that nothing is scored from corners. Really good at doing that. But then the issue comes in with him being a sweeper keeper. I think... He's not the best sweeper keeper, but when you're playing a high line, which it is set to 70 in the situation, you need your goalkeeper to run off his line, be more proactive and reactive with it, um, especially to counter attacks. You need him to be able to spray passes, maintain possession. And in, in a, a Luis Enrique system, I think that is necessary. So it's going to be a sink or swim type of season for him in real life, of course. But in terms of the game, I think this is more or less how Luis Enrique is going to want Donnarumma to play going forward. As for your two centre backs, they are set to the same instructions, which is just the default ones. As for your wing backs, though, also set to the same instructions. Both are set to join the attack, overlap, and stick to their positions. Of course, normal interceptions. You want them providing the width in your team. You don't want your team to just be super narrow with with Neymar and Dembele allowing them to be the only width in the team because they're going to link up with the midfield. They're going to be more or less involved, like very narrowly. So you want your Lucas and your Hakimis to do provide the crosses into the box to provide the the overlapping runs to create space for your midfield to function in which Dembele and Neymar like I said will be very much involved in um, as you can see here for Lucas Hernandez it's said to join the attack overlap and stick to position so yes as for Ugarte the man that so many clubs wanted but he ended up going to PSG I hope he didn't sign for PSG because he thought he might be playing with a Messi and Mbappe potentially a Neymar because they might all be gone. I mean, I know Messi's gone, Mbappe might be gone, and so might Neymar. So, anyway, point being, we're going to talk about Ugarte in the midfield, a fantastic signing. I watched the game where he dominated Arsenal. He did get a red card, I know, but he was fantastic. He is set to tight marking, stay back while attacking, aggressive interceptions, cover the sensor, and then drift wide. Immediately, you're like, how are you drifting wide? Well, essentially what he will do is, 
if Hakimi or Hernandez have bombed on forward and the winger is now counter attacking, he will drift into that position and make sure that that player, um, there's a defensive presence around that person, making sure that they can't just fire in an easy cross into the box or potentially shoot and score a goal. So he is going to more or less drift um, horizontally to cover either Hernandez or Hakimi. But of course, his, his main defensive position is, is going to be stay central, so he's going to shield the likes of Skriniar and Marquinhos, making sure that he can sweep up the balls, maintain possession, um, run into the open space, create um, passing lanes for the likes of Donnarumma to pass into. So he's going to be quite important, but mainly he's got a very aggressive approach to the games, like I have mentioned, um, and that's more or less how you get the best out of him by having him set to tight marking and having him set to have aggressive interceptions on. Um, so yes, so moving forward though, <laughs> into the midfield, we have Ruiz and Vitinha. They are set to balance attack, stay on the edge of the box, aggressive interceptions as well. You kind of want this midfield engine of work to be produced. Um, you want them both to drift wide, so they will drift into those open positions that Neymar and Dembele kind of vacate from time to time, and you want them to also be able to cross balls into the box um, as well. As you can see, for Vitinha, it is also set to the same. Um, it makes the most sense, to be honest. It does make a lot of sense, but also what I like is Vitinha and Ruiz, they have this like innate ability to also like bomb on forward. So there were a few times, I think it was mainly Vitinha, but he like bombed on into the box, even though he is set to stay on the edge. It's like Mbappe slightly dropped deeper and it allowed Vitinha just to like run into that open space, which is quite nice and something that I think we will see from this PSG team. I know Spain have been very good with doing things like that, where you just have a very fluid-esque like system, like midfield and attack just merge. Um, and that's more or less what this has done as well. I'm just looking at Dembele. He is said to come back on defense, cut inside, come short, get into the box and have normal interceptions on. Um, of course, a new signing potentially, and I think it could work out quite well. But the main reason for cut inside and come short, and Neymar is set to the same instructions as well. Um, you want them joining up with the midfield, creating an overload in the midfield, um, interchanging passes, creating little triangles of, of passing play, and just making sure that there are extra men in the midfield for that passage of play, for the passing as well, um, making sure that there are always added players in that midfield. Um, and then, of course, getting to the box, you want to making diagonal runs into the box with the likes of Neymar and Mbappe. Um, and as you can see, Neymar is also set to come back on defense, which is not super realistic, but I've gone with more or less system approach opposed to this player. Um, and of course, essentially, if you're playing a realistic approach, Neymar will be set to stay forward because he does not come back on defense. But in terms of having him in the builder play in the midfield, that's what you're going to have to have him on so you can drop slightly deeper than normal and interchange passes with um, his teammates, of course. But you can see here, very much identical to the likes of Dembele's instructions. And then finally, we have got Mbappe. Now, of course, I did mention false nine. Um, that's not going to be what Mbappe's role would be in this team if he should stay. Um, his set of instructions are to have a balanced width, so he will be running the lanes, but he will also have a very central like focal point role. Um, he is said to get in behind, of course. That makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because it's Mbappe and he's got loads of pace and loads of talent just to burn. Um, he's also said to normal interceptions. You don't want him working too hard off the ball. You kind of want him nice and fresh for when PSG do have the ball. And then, of course, he's said to stay forward. He's going to be your like, furthest focal point in the attack. Um, and, of course, for counter-attacking situations, him being the furthest forward helps you a lot. But speaking of the false nine position, if we have uh, the likes of an Asensio who can play as a centre forward, uh, we saw it at Real Madrid as well. So you just drop Asensio slightly further down. And this is more or less the, the Spain version of Luis Enrique's tactics. Um, you would have him set to drift wide, but mainly play as a false nine who does have aggressive interceptions on and does come back on defence. So he'll be more involved in the build of play in the midfield, of course, um, as well as being able to just be an extra man as well, but also his ability to drift wide, opening up space and pulling the, the central defenders out of position for the likes of a Neymar or a Dembele to run into that space, or even, like I mentioned earlier, a Vitinha or a Ruiz to run into that space. So yes, um, I, we have done it. We have recreated a realistic um, PSG team set of instructions under Luis Enrique. If you have enjoyed this video, as for always, smash the like button, subscribe if you are new. It would mean the absolute world to me if I could provide you good quality content. Let me know down below how you think this team might change. 
um, or if I've horribly blundered this, let me know down below. I'm always open to constructive criticism. Um, but of course, until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day and I am out.